Hello and welcome to Rapid Beginner Program. Today in this episode, we are going to take a CAD drawing and use it as a reference to build a Revit model. We're going to do this using an architectural CAD drawing example. Let's get started. Let's go ahead and add a CAD file into our Revit model. I'm going to use the link CAD option. We learned about this option a little bit more in detail in the last episode. So if you haven't checked that out, please do. Let's go ahead and link a CAD file. I'm going to choose this file that I want to import. I only want to import this CAD file in one of the views that I have selected here, the floor plan. So I'm going to switch on the current view only option. This is a useful option when you don't want to clutter your Revit model with lots of CAD drawings. And here, I'm going to position this auto center to center, the center of my CAD file to the center of my Revit model. I'm going to open that up. Let's go ahead and check whether we imported our CAD file in correct units. So I'm going to zoom in here and choose my dimension option to check whether this is 14 feet. It is. On this side, this is about 17 feet 3 inch, which matches with the units in the CAD file. Now I have my CAD file. How do I begin creating a Revit model out of it? The first thing I want to ensure that my CAD file is in the correct position. Here, because I've imported center to center, I really have no problem with this position. But if you would like to move your CAD file, please feel free to move or rotate your CAD file to make it into a right position. Now, before I move into creating a Revit model, I would like to pin this position so that by mistake, when I'm dragging or moving elements, I don't drag my CAD file. The next thing I want to do is go into the view and visibility graphics. Under imported categories, I will see my CAD file name and under which I will see all the layers that that CAD file contains. I can easily come here and switch off or on a particular layer. For example, I want to switch off the text layer and switch on the zero layer here. I'm going to say OK. The text layer is switched off and the zero layer which contains the grid line has been switched on. You can anytime come back to your visibility graphics, use the shortcut VV or VG to access that and go into imported category and switch that on. Let's go ahead and create our grid lines. I'll go into architecture tab and go ahead and choose my grid option. Instead of drawing a grid line, because I already have the lines in my CAD drawing, I can use the Pick Lines option to do that. So let's go ahead Pick Lines option and select the first line, which is the grid number A. I'm going to rename this grid as A. So let's go to the grid line again, Pick Lines, then this time I'm going to choose the next grid line. And you'll see how automatically that grid line in Revit becomes B. So simply, I just need to select all the grid lines in my CAD file and that will convert into Revit grid lines. Let's go ahead and do it on the horizontal side. And this time, I'm going to select my Revit grid line and change its name to 1. Let's go ahead and create another grid line. And I'm simply going to pick all the grid lines from here. So you see how easy it is to simply trace on your CAD file. Now I want to switch off my grid lines in CAD file. How do I do that? If you already know the layer on which your grid lines are, you can simply go into the visibility graphics, imported categories and switch it off. But if you don't, you can always query it. Let's go ahead and select our CAD file. Go to query option and choose the grid line that we have. This text of the grid line is in the text layer and I can simply hide in view from here. I can also select the another layer, which is the zero one. I'm going to hide in view that one. You can always come back to visibility graphics and switch on and off the layers from here too. The next thing I want to do is to build my walls. Let's go ahead and check the thickness of the wall that we need. I'm going to use dimension tool to measure the thickness of the wall, which is nine inch. So let's go ahead in the wall and choose any one of these generic categories. Let's say I'm going to choose generic four inch brick wall and edit type duplicate and create my own custom wall size. So which is a generic nine inch brick. I'll go into structure edit and change its thickness to zero nine inch. Now the material is already set to brick. So I'm going to say okay to everything. So how do I draw this wall here choosing the CAD file? So one option is that I can simply draw it or I can use the pick lines option. So let's go ahead and pick line because we already have a line in the CAD drawing. 
So I'm going to use Pick Lines option and I'm going to set my location line to finish face exterior because this is the outer finish face exterior line that I want to pick. So let's go ahead and pick this line and you'll see how this wall is created across that line that I have picked. Let's set the height of the top constraint to level 2. I'm going to create another wall which is also constrained to the level 2. So I'm going to create a wall which is going from level 1 to level 2. And the finish face exterior is set for my pick lines option. So let's go ahead and pick another line in this direction. Now let's go ahead and create a few more walls around this area. So here, if you notice here, there is not a continuous line available in CAD file. In CAD, there is a line which is up to this window, and then there is another line for the window, and the wall continues here up to the door. But in Revit, when you're modeling, you don't really create walls in so many different parts. So in this case, instead of choosing a pick lines option, I'm going to choose to manually draw these walls. So first thing, I'm going to set the height of my wall, type of my wall, the location line, and I'm going to start from here and draw all the way across the line that I want to draw. I'm going to start again here and join this. And I'm going to start here. And I'm going to create another wall here. So you'll see the modeling of Revit is slightly different than what how you draw your CAD drawing, which is, which is why you have to choose the drawing method, pick lines or drawing manually, depending on the situation that you have. Let's go ahead and change this into wireframe mode in order to see what we have under the walls. So here we have a window which is about 3 foot 6 inches in width. So let's go ahead and create a window tool. And I'm going to change this particular fixed window. You can always come back and change the sizes or the type or the family of your windows later on as well. So you can always choose to start with a generic level of detail and then eventually once your design gets updated or goes into a detailed design phase, you can always come back to your um, drawings and update the level of detail that you want to use. So let's go into edit type, duplicate, and I'm going to make it 3 foot 6 inch by 3 foot 6 inch kind of a square window. I'm going to choose the width as 3 foot 6 and height also 3 foot 6. I'm going to place it generally. The center of the windows is snapped automatically, but if it doesn't in your case, then you can always place it in random position and you can align it to the CAD reference that you have in the background. So let's put it back into the shaded mode and you'll see how your window is placed here. So let's go ahead and look at it in 3D view here. You can always adjust the sill height or the head height of this. So let's say I want to make this about seven feet. Go ahead and add a door maybe. So I'm going to put it back to wireframe mode and measure the width of my door as two feet 11. Yes, two feet 11. So I'm going to use my door tool and I'm going to choose any of the families that I have by default. If you already know what kind of door you're going to use, load a family and choose that particular size in your model. In this case, I'm going to make this 2 feet 11 by 7 feet. So the height is 7 and the width is 2 feet 11. And I'm going to place it somewhere around here. And I can always come back and align it to the position that I want. So now we have a door and a window in our model. Interesting thing about using the link CAD file as a reference for building your model is that you can always go into the insert tab, manage links, and at CAD formats, you will see all the CAD files that you have linked. And you can anytime come back and unload that particular CAD file from your Revit model. So if you think that you're finished uh, taking reference of your CAD file and you want to work with your Revit model now, and you don't want to clutter your view, so yeah, either you can go ahead and the manage links and unload it, or you can go into visibility graphics, imported categories, and switch it off from here. Now, working with link CAD file also allows you to reload your CAD file if there is an update. For example, if there if your CAD file has changed and if there are any changes to it, you can always come back to your CAD formats in linked CAD file and reload your file here. So if there has been any changes in the original CAD file, those changes will also get updated here. So you can see how your CAD file has updated and update your Revit model based on that. 
Once you have completed working with CAD file and you want to completely remove it from your Revit model, you can go to the manage links, CAD formats, and remove that CAD file permanently from here. So once you remove it, you cannot reload that file in the same position. Once you remove it, it means you have deleted it and now you have to reinsert it in order if you want that file again. So I'm going to remove that and it's gone from my project. So today in this episode, we learned about how to use a CAD file as a reference while you're creating your Revit model. In the next episode, we are going to talk about how to use an image file or a PDF file as a reference for creating your Revit model. So please make sure that you've subscribed. Stay tuned. I'll see you in the next one.